Welcome back to this special four-hour mountain stage edition of our ONN coverage of the Tour de France, stage 13. I'm Bob Varsha with Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. And that elite group of about two dozen of the top riders on tour, as you see, is absolutely exploding. Kevin Livingston with the telecom team was the first away as they blew toward the top of this, la of this uh, fourth climb of today's stage. Now there's Laurent Roux in the King of the Mountains jersey leadership polka dot jersey and there is Livingston who simply rockets by and almost collides with one of the official motos as he rockets away and behind him one by one the riders picked up the chase so that group is now in danger of blowing apart recall that back on stage 10 the run up Nalto Wes Lance Armstrong complimented the telecom team for handling a lot of the pacing chores and keeping the pace up which played right into the hands of America's two-time defending champion Will this be another one of those stages? Once again, here are Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. As we look here now at the Maillot Jaune of the Tour de France, the race ahead has simply exploded with an attack by Kevin Livingstone, and they've all reacted to it, and this man now is losing big time. And it's all happening a long way from the finish, not in kilometres, but because of the fact that we still have to climb after we top the pair of swords, the Col de Val Laurent and the climb of Pladerday itself. This is a remarkable stage now. These climbers now are going to absolutely blow this race apart. One of Jan Ulrich's teammates coming forward there, that must be Andreas Cloden or Guerini. Guerini and Cloden were still in this group. We've just a few moments ago seen an unbelievable attack from Kevin Livingstone. I'm convinced today that Ulrich wants to blow Armstrong apart. He probably feels that Armstrong might have a hard time on this mountain pass after showing Ulrich a clean pair of wheels yesterday. Armstrong for the moment has two very good teammates in the group with him. He has Heras and Rubiera. On the other hand, Ulrich also has two meet teammates in this group, Guerini and Cloden, but a man up the road, and that man up the road is Kevin Livingstone. Further up the road, he has another man, Alexander Vinokurov. Tactically, at the moment, advantage going to the men in pink. Back from the uh, front group, which was a minute up the road at Lucian, is Jimenez. He's been just passed by, first by Livingstone, now by the chase group. This is Michael Bogart, who has tried desperately to resist the attempts of the group. Every time he gets back on, they accelerate and he comes off the back again. But he's suffering well and he's keeping them uh, in his sights at least as we continue towards the summit of the Col de Peresord. And this is a nasty climb towards the top and we're not far away from it, at least for Laurent Jalabert right now. That's Perez of Festina, Luis Perez, he's just attacked and also decided it was a big effort for nothing because he's resisted and gone back into the peloton. This is a, a bunch now of pure climbers in the Tour de France. Everybody else seems to have just got out of the way and let uh, the others go. We've got Armstrong, Harris and Rubiera are still here for US Postal. Ulrich has a Garini, Livingstone has gone up the road, but Loki is still here. Got Gonzalez de Galliano, Serrano, we've just seen Perez, Bogart and Ertz are in a bit difficulty. Atienza is here to give Kivalev a hand. Remember, Kivalev still second overall. Amansebo, Menchov and Pipoli are also here. David Echebarria from Uskatel, joined by Sharo. Botcherov, the Russian, Guber, Sevilla and Rus. They are the riders left in this rather select group now team with the biggest advantage I would say at the moment is this team the Onse squad this is Marcus Serrano a few moments ago we saw a huge attack come off the front of that group from Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano but that was quickly marked by the team of Jan Ulrich and Telecom they were not going to let him ride off the front but Kevin Livingston further up the road is actually passing one by one a lot of these riders who are coming back and that is what Laurent Jalabert will see when he looks up to the summit. This is the last four and a half kilometers of climbing here to the summit of the Col de Peresord. And if he gets to the little lasses towards the top there and looks back, he'll get an idea of just how big his advantage is over the main field. Jalabert here just riding a steady tempo. He knows this climb. He's been over it many times before. But in fact, Vinukurov at the moment losing serious time to Jalabert, four minutes behind him. Four minutes, 20 seconds fine behind him is Brogina, the Benesto rider. So this is really a great ride here by Laurent Jalabert. He was in that group that formed very early on in the race after 27 kilometers. And he felt as the 73rd kilometer mark, they weren't going fast enough. And he's going out on a huge, long, solitary move by himself. He needs the points here to confirm himself as King of the Mountains before they start catching him up. And as you can see, the Lassets continue ahead of... 
the rider here who lives in Switzerland. He's very much a Frenchman and races on a Danish team. And the big crowd are waiting for him there. They'll shout his name all the way to the top as well. It's been yet another marvellous escape by Laurent Jalabert, former champion of France. Uh, but the real race right now is right in the heart of a group of just 20 riders. And there they are. And Armstrong again playing the role he played on the way to Alpe d'Huez. He's watching the telecom use their men and lift the tempo, and he's hanging on. And what the tempo is doing is destroying the original nine-man breakaway of the day. Vinukarov and Avermo are out uh, by four minutes behind Jalabeb. Brogina is a bit behind on his own, and others are coming back one by one to the break. This is Sven Montgomery and Roberto Leseca. So I think they're going to be picked up now. They were part of that group with Garzelli earlier on and they haven't desisted the lifting of the tempo now Livingstone must have gone by these Livingstone is burning the road up right now he's having a huge day in the mountains he's ridden past these two riders and he's picking up riders one after the other the group here of Armstrong and Ulrich is unbelievable Brogina in fact at the moment we're hearing on race radio has just caught the group of Vinokurov and Vermota so there are three riders now chasing Laurent Jalabert but they are four minutes behind the lone French leader Jalabert, a man who's expatriated himself for most of his career, he turned professional for the Toshiba team back in 1989, Phil, and after that, he went across to the Spanish Onse team for nine years. As we look back here, big supporters coming out for the boys today, and Lauren Jalabert, an amazing, you get a chance to see just how difficult it is for a bike rider. He, in fact, is not going very much faster than that lady was running up this climb, but he's been in the saddle, saddle, saddle now for more than four and a quarter hours. He's still looking good. He wants the points at the top of the climb and then he will have to see what happens on the next one because the train is on the attack. But the gaps are not coming down very, very fast. Vino, Vermo, we think Brogina is just behind and inching up to them right now. Now, Thomas Brogina is a Pole, the only other Polish rider ever to have won a stage of the Tour de France. is Zenin Yaskula and he won it on this very climb. Oh, well, not this one, but the finish. <laughs> That would be quite remarkable if he were to do that, but this man at the moment is having a pretty hard time. Jalabert inside one kilometre from the summit right now, but you can see what kind of a summit is it. He can see the crowd all the way on the side of this mountain leading away a channel of noise over the last kilometre. A little word, Jalabert not wanting to take on board a bottle just now. He'll wait until he gets to the summit of the climb. But in fact, if he has taken on board that bottle, I would say the referees have given him permission to do so. Jalabert at the moment leading this race by four minutes over a group of three, and still eight and a half minutes back to the group containing all the favourites, Armstrong, Ulrich and the rest. Jalabert with a quick look down the mountain to see where the peloton is, although he may have been looking for that supporter who ran alongside. After all, he may be a bike racer leading the Tour de France, but he is a Frenchman after all. He'll be back live. Stand by for more from the Tour. And mountain biking might be an appropriate reference to what's going on right now as the Tour de France peloton struggles up these massive climbs. Six of them on today's stage. One category two, four category ones, and one or category at the end of which a lot of these riders may be hors de combat let's get back to phil and paul well this is it this is the top and it's the third first category climb of the day that jalabert has won welcome to the polka dot jersey lauren because it now waits for you when you get to the play today lauren Lou won the first climb as jalabert was second there and then he went off on his great adventure he's crossed the col de monte the Col de Portillon and the Col de Perro Sword, but he's still got two more climbs to go. His time gap at the moment over the Armstrong group, which is now down to some 17 riders, is nine and a half minutes, so he's still got everything in hand. Vinu Kurov and Vermo have now been joined by Brazil. You might get pictures of them, but our cameras are now spread all over the Pyrenees to try and locate the riders who are breaking up. Now the latest news we have on Pascal's on the Pascal Simon on Francois Simon is that he has conceded at the moment a minute and 25 seconds to the Armstrong group and if he starts to continue if he continues to lose at that sort of rate then he will be more than two and a half minutes behind over the top of this climb with two tips uh, still to come 
I would expect him to lose at least a couple of minutes on each of those because he will start to lose morale. He will feel the yellow jersey slipping away from him, a dream that he's had for a long time now. He went into the mountains with a 34-minute advantage over riders like Armstrong. He's down to nine minutes advantage over Armstrong right now, and he's already today lost one and a half minutes of that. I would expect Lance Armstrong to be in the yellow jersey at the end of today because almost certainly Francois Simon is going to crack big time over the next two climbs. Well, uh, one thing that Jalabert can do is go downhills quick, and this is where he'll hold his own now as he descends back over the Perisor to the other side of the valley which is in fact the side of the valley of saint marie sous long This is this beautiful town that will just tickle around the edge of as we start the climb of the Plat de Day. But before we get there, we have the simple crossing of the valley of Laurent to come. There's this very select group, and what a group it is too. Uh, the big boys of this year's Tour de France now, about 17 strong, and it looks like maybe a little bit less than that. Gone now is Mario Ertz and Michael Bogart. Also gone is Guy Bear. And uh, one of the names that's notable is David Echeverria has also been dropped, our hero of yesterday. It's rather interesting just now because the telecom situation is becoming somewhat complicated. Four minutes behind Lawrence Jalabert, we have a telecom rider, Alexander Vinokurov. Then three and a half minutes behind that group is Kevin Livingston. At the moment, Livingston is only riding about 40 seconds off the front of the Jan, uh, Jan Ulrich and, Ke and Lance Armstrong group. I'm not quite sure now if this tactic is going to work unless in the back of his mind Jan Ulrich wants to attack on the descent and that's not exactly where he's very strong. Armstrong is a much better descender than him but who knows, maybe Jan today feels that he can put some time between himself and Armstrong on this part of the climb. Biloki there in the middle in the pink looking very comfortable. He is only one second ahead of Jan Ulrich in the overall standings and he would certainly like to put some time between himself and the He's big He's getting German. a bit itchy, I think, uh, Ulrich. He's looking around. Guirini on the front. Leonardo Pipoli is the Benesta rider. Now here he is. He's also losing ground with that leading group. One by one, they are being left and the top strong men of the tour as this rider goes away and uh, looking now at the green jersey here is this Oscar Severe in trouble it is now we weren't expecting that just how fast are oh, they going and this is why this is the attack now Mano a Mano with three calls to climb Ulrich has attacked at the wall the end of the Col de Perisord Armstrong has spotted it and so too is Bellocchi well everybody was waiting for this because of the fact they sent Kevin Livingston off the front they were trying to set something up Armstrong right onto the wheel of the German Bellocchi is there they've left everybody gasping for breath you get an idea of how difficult it's been this stage so far because Oscar Sevilla was dropped off the back when they were riding tempo. Now then, we've got a huge group here. Balocchi's cracked as well. Now Ulrich and Armstrong again as we get closer to the summit of this climb. But don't forget, just in front of Ulrich right now is his teammate, Kevin Livingston. And if he gets up to him, of course, it's two against one and uh, the friend of Lance Armstrong will have to ride for his rival, Ulrich. That may have been the plan, as complex as it's been today. Ulrich has gone and blown the race apart this is an incredible ride here now because when these two attack the yellow jersey is going to lose maybe three minutes by the top of this mountain but where are Armstrong's climbers right now? Heras and Riviera, they cannot follow the, the pace here being set by Jan Ulrich at the moment. Ulrich is a fighter. He wants to win this Tour de France for a second time, and Armstrong knew this. Look at that. The look over his shoulder now to see just what is your state of affairs, Armstrong. You've looked at me a couple of times and blown me away. I'm going to try and do the same to you today. Armstrong, though, Phil, is always calm and collected. That face shows no pain. It shows no reaction at all. He knows he has one man to match in this Tour de France and he's right in front of him at the moment. So as they ride towards the summit of the Perisord, Ulrich is giving it one of his best shots here. People he has recovered a little bit. Kivalev and uh, Atienzi is the rider just in front for Kofidis. Kivalev I think is a little bit further up because we've not been uh, told he is being dropped. But Balocchi tried to go with them and it wasn't in his legs. Now they're not coming up for second and third place, they're the best of the rest at the moment at 5 minutes and 27 seconds. So because of the flurry of attacks, Paul, they've taken off 4 minutes. 
There's Kevin Livingston just in front right now. He will have known and heard about the attack of his man, Jan Ulrich. But they've slashed three minutes off the advantage of the lone leader. Whereas 131 for France, CSC World Online, Laurent Jalabert. He too by now will know that the attack is on behind. They won't pull very much back on him on this descent though, because he is a great descender. A huge acrobat on the bike. But these men now have set the race on fire. At the moment, tactically, Telecom have played a very good game. They're two against one, but don't forget, they still have another man in front, Alexander Vinokurov. Armstrong has been completely isolated. That was the idea behind that plan. Well, Atienza hanging on here for Kopitis. Kibalev is in front of him. And also, it's nice to see that Oscar Sevilla in the white jersey, after that flurry, has rejoined. Botcherov is the AG2R rider also here, riding very well. He's waving now for a bottle. Let me just uh, recap the situation for you. Jalabel has gone over the top of the Portion as the winner of the day. Vinukarov, Vemo and Brogina together at around four minutes. Oh, and then we have uh, Livingstone, but he's now been joined by Armstrong and Ulrich. So it's two against one in favour of Telecom. Well, in fact, it's going to be quite remarkable soon because they're only a minute and 25 seconds behind the group of Vinukarov. So very shortly, there will be three Telecom riders together. And this was the plan of the day for Telecom to isolate Armstrong. They'd seen the chinks in the armour of his team. Armstrong bolstered the team this winter to bring on board some very strong climbers, Heras and Rubiera. But they've had a hard time over the flat mountains. This is one of Armstrong's men on the frontier. That looks very much like Heras trying to get the group organised to try and get up there alongside his team leader but for the moment the bike race is really on fire and as the pace picks up to 45 50 miles an hour or so Laurent Jalabert remains out front but the battle is behind him once again mano a mano Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong the great American Greg LeMond was known as a man who could do it alone maybe Armstrong can to go this was Jan Ulrich in the midst of a fire-breathing descent off the Col de Perisord with Lance Armstrong. The German overshot a curve and flew into the trees. Here you see him climbing back out, desperate to get back on his bike. There's Kevin Livingston waiting for his team leader. The German, the 97 Tour de France winner, has completed an almost unbelievable blunder out on the course. Now back to live pictures. Here is Ulrich trying to get back on terms. Armstrong has flown off down the road. I'm sure he cannot believe what has just happened as Ulrich, his main rival, has gone off the road and lost big double handfuls of time. Once again, here's Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. Well, what a good job it was that Livingstone was up the road and Ulrich caught up with him with uh, Lance Armstrong because after he made that terrible mistake, overshooting on the bend, misreading the line completely. Thank heavens it was only a rather deep ditch and not a big plunge down the valley below. But anyway, he doesn't seem injured, Ulrich, and Livingstone immediately stopped and looked for him. And then uh, once he was back over the barriers, this is Lance Armstrong, who I think is waiting here, and he is. As we look now at the replay again, that was the corner as he followed up. He was leading Armstrong, looking up to follow him. But there was that nasty little bit of a plunge and he went over the handlebars. He got back on now. We believe that Lance Armstrong is, in fact, waiting for the return of Ulrich. Now, that is common sense. A, he hasn't wanted to take advantage of a mistake by the German. That's fair enough and fair play. But he's also not wanting to go across two more mountains on his own. I have a funny feeling that Kibbelev might have come up to Lance Armstrong as well because of that accident here by Ulrich. Ulrich, we know, is not one of the best descenders in the world, but he decided to try and go absolutely all out on the descent. He has his teammate with him now. This is Kevin Livingston, and I'm absolutely certain that Armstrong will wait for those two riders to come back. That is a confidence rider, and it looks very much as if it should be Andre Kivilev. It could be Atienza, but Kivilev will certainly try and keep himself in the bike race. And Belocki might be getting himself back in the action here, too, uh, because of that... Uh Terrible mistake by Jan Ulrich as they're now swinging across towards Ludin Biel. And it is Bolocki who's got back as well, so he's profited by that mistake. Armstrong, well, Bolocki's not going to wait for Ulrich, so Armstrong's no choice now. And this is confirmed as Andrei Kivalev, who's having the ride of his life, currently the Mayo Jean of the Tour now. And Armstrong will be up in the second place. This is the sprint at Ludin Biel. 
and uh, Jalaba well out of the trouble at the back as he takes the points uh, for the green jersey there and a small time bonus you won't worry about either Armstrong um, it's not Armstrong Paul Ulrich it doesn't look as though he's hurt from that fall but he must have had one heck of a shot that would have given him a real boost of uh, adrenaline going off the corner like that but he handled it very well he you see when a bike rider knows he's going to lose it he looks for options and a way out and that's exactly what Jan Ulrich did he will have seen almost in slow motion that there was a crash barrier at the side of the road he will also have seen that it was almost a small paddock and he aimed for it and at the last minute he must have locked up the front wheel and rolled over the top I don't think he's very much injured from that crash right now because he's up very quickly and riding well Armstrong on the other hand Phil I don't think will ride in this group he'll leave it up to Bilocchi because Bilocchi wants to try and take advantage of that crash and increase his time over the big German Jan Ulrich Armstrong is now tactically in a superior position he's sending forward Kivilev okay you're the man who wants to get the yellow jersey today you guys work I'm not too bothered because I'm only worried about Jan Ulrich and Ulrich will come back to this group pretty smartly I would say well, Kivilev and Armstrong separated by uh, 28 seconds on the overall classification in favour of Kivilev, so Armstrong could knock him off easily enough on the last climb to, of the day. Uh, but this rider here now in a state of panic, as he has one teammate with him, and Hughes will not yet have reached Vinukarov, I don't think. If it has, you might see Vinukarov sit up and wait and pick up his leader. Well, there's the yellow car of the neutral service vehicle and in front of that car is number one Armstrong, 21 Bilocki and 74 Andrei Kivilev. They're only about 20 seconds behind right now. Look at Kevin Livingston. What a move that was by Te Kevin Livingston and Team Telecom to, ha to have their man just in front because if not, this would have been a very long, hard chase and we're about to witness the catch of Ulrich after a very dramatic moment for him on the slopes of that descent down off the Col de Peresur. This is a five-man group now and Andre Kivilev must be feeling very good by the fact that he is still in with a chance with the leaders he's 36 seconds ahead of Lance Armstrong in the overall standings but at the end of the day this race is going to get turned completely upside down and Armstrong just a quick look at Ulrich and I would say as the champion that Armstrong is he asked Jan Ulrich how he's doing yes these two uh, are deadly rivals of victory in the Tour de France but quite clearly there Armstrong master of fair play he wasn't going to take advantage of a mistake and if a rider makes a mistake and it's his fault why shouldn't he take advantage of it but he chose not to he still decided to let the pace come to him and Ulrich is back and now look at this Livingstone is setting the pace I tell you there's huge respect between Lance Armstrong and Jan Ulrich as they come up to catch some of the riders who are well up the road in front of them this has been an unbelievable stage so far and we've still got two massive climbs to go well, lastly, Sekiru they brought back. We haven't seen him for ages. I thought, in fact, we passed him. Uh, but he's still a, rem a remnant of that little breakaway that was clear through Luchon. That was seven kilometres to climb now on the penultimate climb of the day. Back to our king, Laurent Jalabert. That's what he will be by the end of the day. This is the climb now, the Col de Val Laurent. Seven kilometres. And we'll lift him up to the 170 kilometre point, which will leave him just 24 to go. Jaja has to keep himself in his own rhythm right now he's not even thinking about the race that's happening behind him he's just in his own frame of mind he gets onto these climbs and he rides them at a pace that is just comfortable for himself you see he's now gone down onto the small chain ring on the inside and probably around about a 22 or 23 spotted in the rear he gets into that pace which a lot of riders get into which is just in about comfortable for them a little bit of pain creeping into the legs but for Jalabert the important thing here is not to lose too much time on the climbs because then he knows he can go downhill like a madman and that's something Jan Ulrich tried to do and came unstuck 30 kilometers to go for Lauren Jalabert the hero of the day He's a, it's a, if he survives this breakaway, he'll be a lead in the lead for 140 kilometers. If he can do that, he really is a superman today on this beautiful cloudless sky in the Pyrenees. And Jan Ulrich has seen it from all angles. This is one of the most magnificent days I've seen in the Pyrenees in many years. Not a cloud in the sky. The temperatures in the valley rose up above 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, Laurent Jalabert here looking very comfortable after a huge escapade which started for him after just 27 kilometers of ra racing. So he's keeping his tempo, he's hanging on in there and he's looking for more points on the top of his fourth first category climb of the day. And that'll give him a big lead in the mountains. 
No question about that. And he continues to pile up points as well. Laurent Jalabert, an amazing story and would be dominating the Tour de France, but for the presence of Lance Armstrong and Jan Ulrich and their man-to-man -man struggle that just witnessed this amazing mistake by the German. We'll be back. At the back of a group which contains Lance Armstrong, Jan Ulrich, who just went over the handlebars of his machine, and got back on the road. Kevin Livingston of the United States assisted his telecom teammate in rejoining the group and out the front now with the uh, with the pink cap on. Alexander Vinokurov is back. So there are now three telecom riders battling Lance Armstrong in this group. Once again, here are Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. We're looking down on the Armstrong Ulrich group, now strengthened by the arrival from the front of Alexander Vinukarov, sent back by the team manager to pick up the pace with Kevin Livingstone, and there he is now. So there are three telecoms now taking on Lance Armstrong, and uh, we don't think that Ulrich is wounded at all. They're now at the seven kilometers to the summit of the penultimate call of the day. Kevin Livingstone will set the pressure now. Vinokurov, I think, will be pretty hard having a pretty hard time at the moment and in fact you can see immediately one or two riders going off the back of this group Vinokurov is dropping back and you can see two other riders have been very smartly left behind just now Lance Armstrong is going to have to play a very clever tactical game as Brozina and Vermote go off the back of this group these two riders were in a group with Vinokurov a few moments ago and in fact there are a couple of other riders up the road that we've completely forgotten about Garzelli and Botero and they are not too far in front of this group right now and don't forget David Moncoutier he's there somewhere too trapped in the middle of what is a war zone right now uh, as our cameras are staying rightly with the race here and even with a Frenchman leading the Tour de France today Laurent Jalabert leading in the King of the Mountains uh, everybody committed now with what everybody sees as the battle for the yellow jersey which is now up for grabs in the Tour de France. Kivalev is here, he's second overall, Ulrich and Armstrong but gone now is the Mayo Jaune itself, Francois Simon three minutes behind at the top of the Perrier Sword. If this battle continues he'll be 15 behind at the top of the Plat today. He will lose an awful lot of time, but now Armstrong is going to have to be very careful on the way he manoeuvres this group. Here is Santiago Botero, the Colombian rider who attacked earlier on on the slopes of the Perez Sword. He is about to get pulled back into the fold. Confirmation of the gap back to the yellow jersey group there. Three minutes and 20 seconds behind the group of Lance Armstrong. This is David Moncoutier, so we're still missing one rider at the moment. And that's Stefano Garzelli. He must be just a little way in front of these men at the moment. Armstrong now, Phil, is going to have to be very careful, and I'm not sure that he'll find very many allies in this group. Joseba Bilocki may well be an ally for him because he wants to make sure he can stay in front of Jan Ulrich in the overall standings. But I would say because of the respect between Armstrong and Ulrich, if Ulrich can't get Armstrong into difficulty, he may well find the German an ally on the final climb of the day. Well, what an amazing Tour de France this is. Two great bike riders of the era, Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong, one-on-one. -on -one. They want to do it the sporting way. They're not going to take advantage of accidents or flat tyres. They've made that quite clear now. And uh, Armstrong proving that his team not good enough to go with him. They had their problems, uh, but the switching over in the winter of Kevin Livingstone to the enemy has proved extremely significant today for Jan Ulrich. It was Livingstone who waited for Ulrich when he crashed and took him back up to Armstrong, and he's the man setting the pace now. This is the Russian rider on ibanesto.com, Denis Muchov. And this group here containing several other riders. There's Guerini, there is Atienza, Didier Rus. This must certainly be the group of the yellow jersey. Here's one of Armstrong's teammates here. That's rather remarkable to see Rubiera in this group. But I can't see, this is not the yellow jersey group, in fact the yellow jersey must be a long way behind. There's Bocharov, the Russian, from AG2R. Mansebo, 91 there, the rider from Bonesto. He was lo hoping to rival the man in the white jersey, and his rival is right here. So is uh, Roberto Heras. So this is a pretty serious group out on the road, led round that corner there by Leonardo Pipoli. They've picked up Roberto Lysecca. But this is the second tier of climbers, and remarkably enough, Armstrong's two climbers still weren't able to stay with him. No, but they're forming a second group. Now, we're hearing on race radio that the Armstrong group, here's the yellow jersey, even further down the mountain, the Armstrong group have just caught to Stefano Garzelli. 
So only one man survives out there now, the leader of the tour today, Laurent Jalabert, while this man here is hanging on. Jean-Cyl Robin trying to keep him in touch with the action here. This has been a great show of defiance these past few days by Simon, but now he's going to have to hang on. Great riding by jean Siri Robin. He's finished high in the overall standings at the Tour before, and he was in fact signed up by Lance Armstrong's US Postal team for a couple of years, hopefully to ride high in the rankings there. He never quite confirmed, but he does have the ability to ride well on these kind of races. Tête de la course, the head of the bike race, and it's still Laurent Jalabert with four minutes and 20 seconds over the chasing group of Armstrong, Ulrich, Livingston, Bilocchi, Kivilev, Moncoutier, Botero, and as you said a few moments ago, Phil Garzelli. Well, we're waiting to get confirmation of what is very important at the moment of Ludon Viel, where the sprint was. Jalabert was first through there. And we're now on the climb of the Col de Val Laurent. And uh, this is the fourth first category climb of the day. Jalabert has won the previous three. And more attacks being launched again. Well, we've got to hand it to Bilocchi doing this. He was in trouble a moment ago. Well, this is what it's all about on a mountain stage like this. Bilocchi now trying to put Ulrich into difficulty, but Ulrich recuperating marvellously from that crash there. Straight onto the wheel of Barocchi. Armstrong moving up there into third place, and on his shoulder, Andrei Kivilev. Botero is there as well. But in fact, one of the other riders from Onse, it would appear somebody, that is in fact Kivilev, who's popped off the back, but he's going to try and recover. Livingstone also in trouble now, having set the pace. He might recover. It depends how much they continue with the pace here. Ulrich has come back to calm things down, I think, at the front. Bolocki put back in his place. We, we have to say, Paul, this is a sensational ride by Andre Kivilev. Brilliant. He's hanging on for grim life at the moment. He wants to hold on to his dream of getting to the podium in Paris, but he's 36 seconds ahead of Lance Armstrong at the start of the day. Armstrong has to keep a very close eye on Bilocchi and Ulrich at the moment, and we're still around about five kilometres to the summit for Laurent Jalabert, so we're looking at still around about 15 minutes of climbing for these riders. It's going to be an absolute explosion on the slopes of Paradis because not one of these riders has kept anything in reserve. They all want to blow the race to pieces today because this is the biggest, toughest Pyrenean stage. And still... Uh uh, Bilocchi here has managed to survive. This is Didier Roos in a spot of bother, the French champion, as he runs up with the devil on the climb of Val Laurent. He's just dangling off this third group, second or third group on the road now, and everybody in a state of panic today. Well, panic is right. Chaos is another good word, and the ranks are quickly thinning up front. Jan Ulrich, it appears, will soon find himself without a telecom teammate as he goes shoulder to shoulder and pedal stroke for pedal stroke with Lance Armstrong. We'll be back. Bob Varsha, Phil Liggett, Paul Sherman with you. A dramatic stage 13 of the 2001 Tour de France. Once again, we want to bid welcome to all the U.S. servicemen and women watching on Armed Forces Network and to our Canadian viewers watching on OLN as well. We have two great stories. One is out front, Laurent Jalabert, who has led this race since the 27th kilometer. We are now 166 kilometers into the event. His lead is down to 3 minutes 25 seconds over this group of six, which includes the men you see there. Ulrich, Armstrong, Veloki, Kivilev, men all in the battle for the yellow jersey at day's end. Lance Armstrong just had a quick visit with his team car, picked up some refreshment. Once again, here's Phil and Paul. Well, as we look here now at the group here, Bilocchi is in a spot of bother as the flag ben bends there of the Belgium, and in fact, Bilocchi has launched an attack. Bilocchi so going off the front right now, trying to put some time between himself and Jan Ulrich. He started the day just one second ahead of Ulrich in the overall standings, and he would love to climb ahead of him in Paris. But in fact, Armstrong is coming forward now from the group. We're hearing this over race radio. So also is Jan Ulrich. Well, Bilocchi attacked when he saw Ulrich go to his team car. Armstrong had just been there. Ulrich went back, and the next thing is Bilocchi had gone again. That's twice today. He's taken advantage of a situation over Ulrich to try and break him, but Ulrich has come back very quickly. You've got to admire but Bilocchi because he seems to have been in trouble a couple of times, yet he hasn't stopped him launching an attack. But still, Kivalev is hanging on in there. And that's Kivalev who's come up with Botero hanging on to the coattails now. And these counter-attacks are going to close the gap to Jalabert. We are about to line up for the battle of the Platte day. It's a mountain which has always given us a great finish. 
Ulrich is looking very strong right now and every man in this group is completely isolated from his team that is why the mountains is where the Tour de France is won that's when it becomes man against man when nobody has any teammates left and you have to fight completely against your arrival on the exact flat fields which at the moment are pretty uphill as we're on here the slopes of the penultimate climb of the day the Col de Val Laurent to Azé this is Jan Ulrich just now. He doesn't have any of his teammates left. A few moments ago, they were in a tactically superior position within that group, Kevin Livingston and Alexander Vinokurov. But right now, it's Armstrong against Ulrich, against Belocki, and they want to get rid of one man, Andrei Kivilev, who is well in front of them in the overall standings. Garzelli is a long way further back, around about 25 seconds behind the group of Lance Armstrong. He tried to go away on the Col de Perissoud, but he wasn't able to. No, but just finally, we were told he was back there, but in fact, quite clearly he wasn't. Garzelli is now just 10 seconds in front and about to be put in his place here. He attacked before Luchon after the descent of the Portillon. And now here comes Ulrich leading the train to put Garzelli, former winner of the Giro d'Italia, back in his position. And I think then, finally, everybody except Jalabert have been picked up. They have been spread all over the Pyrenees today. Now, Jalabert, last check, 3 minutes 25. That should be good enough to see him over the top of this climb and give him more points in the King of the Mountains. Uh, but uh, fingers crossed, he's going to be in, uh, uh, in the proximity of the chase when he gets onto the Plat Day. This is Ulrich. His main concern is what can he do to get rid of Armstrong? And he hasn't found the answer yet. And he's played just about every tactic that we know about Paul. Everybody has tried their chance so far. Belocchi on the right in the pink jerseys tried to leap off the front. This man we're looking at here was the winner last year of the Giro d'Italia. A very good climber, but today he's about to get caught by the strong men of the Tour de France. They're down to five contenders at the moment. Super contenders at that. Santiago Botero is the Kelme rider on the back. He leapt off the front on the Col de Perissoud, but very smartly has been picked up by this elite group. Laurent Jalabert, on the other hand, is still surviving off the front of the field. Three minutes, 25 seconds, and a bit further back, this is the second main group of rivals. This is Mancebo with his teammate Leonardo Pipoli, and they are joined by another rider here from Ibonesto.com who was in the leading group or the chasing group for quite some time. That was Thomas Brogina. Bocciolov, nearest camera, Atienza, Guerini, Sevilla, these are the riders now coming back to the group here and this looks like it's Rubiera of the US Postal Team all in trouble today and still one more mountain to come and it's a brute. This has been a marvellous race here. We're back with the yellow jersey now. We're not too sure where we... No, sorry, no, we're not. Camera's playing tricks. I must put my glasses on more often. As we're now back with Uskadel here and the Anse boys who are driving the pace earlier on but now are falling out. Charo is the last man from Uskadel here in the orange to be dropped by the leaders and the man who came back to help out has now been dropped after the attack by Belocchi is Vinokurov. He's having a fabulous Tour de France though. Vinokurov hoping to survive now after doing a lot of work for his team leader. I would expect this is going to be Kevin Livingston coming back as well. These guys have done an incredible job today for their team leader but now having done their job all they can hope to do is survive on the slopes of the final climb of the day the massive climb up to Plata Day the riders climb around about 900 meters of ascension from the valley below saint larry soulon to the top of the Plata Day but none of this concerns at all the position of Laurent Jalabert on the road he's just riding his own pace hoping to survive over this next climb he's not too far from the summit right now he still possesses three and a half minutes lead over that group and very shortly I must certainly believe that Stefano Garzelli is back in the group a few moments ago they'd announced he was caught by the group but he's holding on quite stubbornly and Jalabert is holding on from everybody more than stubbornly this has been a fabulous breakaway by Laurent Jalabert across the Pyrenees today he came out with the ambition of winning the King of the Mountains in a one day of attacking riding and he's going to win this climb as well but after that it'll be touch and go whether he'll make the all category climb of the uh, Plata Day that's another question indeed under the 25 kilometer go banner goes Laurent Jalabert here at the finish line in saint lary sur lon they have a poster that says 100% Pyrenees 
Well, the Pyrenees, today at least, have been 100% Laurent Jalabert. He has been absolutely magnificent. His day is not yet done. There is the group Armstrong, as it's being called in the timing of scoring screens. And up front, there is Laurent Jalabert. Look at the flags of the Basque homeland being waved at him. He's probably being shouted at in the Basque language, Euskara, which probably means nothing at all to Laurent Jalabert, except that he knows they are rooting him on. He has been all day the breakaway leader, approaching yet another big climb. And once again, here are Phil and Paul. This is remarkable. This is a recuperation by Lance Armstrong number one lieutenant where's number two Roberto Heras he must have dug deep today he knows that Armstrong needs him on this big mountain stage and this is why Heras was brought across the team the winner of last year's Vuelta a España was brought across for an awful lot of money into the US Postal Service team and today he may well pay back his contract he's there where's number two and Armstrong will feel completely bolstered because of that because he's got the man who not only is his protege but also a very good friend these days Absolutely, and all of a sudden the pendulum has swung again. Now the odds are two to one in favour of US Postal. It was three to one in favour of Telecom on the previous mountain. As they're coming up towards the summit now, Jalabert will get the points at the top, but I'm not too sure he's even going to make the start of the Plata Day because these riders are continuing at a great tempo. Unbelievable. I'm really not sure where Harris came from. He was riding about 40 seconds off the group of Lance Armstrong and realized he had to do something special today. He could not leave his man on his own at the front of the bike race and leapt out of the group and a huge effort by him to join Armstrong. And now there are two US postal riders in this chasing group on the road. There's one man still at the head of the race though. And look at this, Zsa, Zsa is having a great day over the Pyrenees. He's saluting the crowd. He probably recognized some friends there. He's not too far now from the summit of the Col de Val Luron and he will get once again maximum points increasing his lead all of the time in the King of the Mountains competition and I don't know if you remember Phil but a couple of days ago we actually predicted that that would be one of his titles and what a great title and what a way to win it he's still got to go through it all tomorrow and we'll need to calculate his gains today to see if he makes it tomorrow but he's certainly trying very hard to sew this competition up on this second day in the Pyrenees so Jalabert continues and uh, has the audacity to wave to friends as he comes up for his fourth first category mountain points of the day each time he tops the climb he gets 40 points and that's moving him well clear of the rest now the mountains are what heroics are all about everybody who gets to the end of a mountain stage has one story or another to tell and Laurent Jalabert will certainly have a great one to tell today about his long escape over the Pyrenean stage the toughest Pyrenean stage with four first category climbs and still yet to get himself to the finish up to the summit of the Plata Day and that is going to be quite remarkable he is just surviving off the front of the Lars Armstrong group right now Armstrong's group at the same point that Jalabert was a few moments ago probably only 500 meters separating them Heras going back to the team car I think now for something for Armstrong as we get closer to the summit took himself a can of coca-cola there off the spectators as he went by and put it in his back pocket but there's nobody going to catch now he's just about 800 meters on the climb ahead of the Armstrong group as they now descend down to uh, San Luis Soulon and begin the final climb of the day well I can't see him surviving it would be a lovely story if he did uh, but we're going to see a battle of the big names of the Tour de France the battle for the vacant yellow jersey it's between uh, three riders at the moment Kivilev Armstrong well, between four we must include Balocki Kivilev Armstrong Balocki and Ulrich are now fighting out the yellow between them going to be a huge battle Heras is obviously a lot better now he must have gone through a difficult period he went back to the US Postal team car there to bring on board some extra fluid there for Armstrong Armstrong now is obviously going to be tactically superior to Ulrich but don't discount this man from Germany he's a tough bike rider and a fighter and he's come to the Tour de France this year in the best possible situation he's been in since he won the event back in 1997 he prepared specifically for this race by taking part in the Giro d'Italia in which he he finished almost an hour and a half down but he suffered and rode with a great confidence that he would come to the Tour de France in fine shape and fine shape he has come Garzelli 
I cannot believe Phil is still surviving. He's still around about 10 seconds off the front of the Lance Armstrong group, but on the descent, they will pick him up. Stefano Garzelli, too, will be looking to ride himself a bit higher in the overall standings today, because let's not forget this man is the winner of a Grand Tour, and that was last year. Garzelli started the day in 12th position overall, and he will hope to climb up just a little bit higher than that. Garzelli is riding a very, very good Tour de France after what for him was a rather disappointing attempt to defend his victory in the Giro d'Italia. Crowd a little bit calmer now as they see an Italian go past them. The majority of the crowd here are Spanish today. But the majority of the crowd, I would say, are come for a nationality they would like to have separate from Spain because yes. there are more Basque flags out there than there are Spanish flags. We are in the heart of Basque cycling and that is really one thing that the Basques adore and they've turned out and there are hundreds of thousands today for this weekend in the Pyrenees. Belocchi now is on the front here. Wales 21. Ulrich Botero for Colombia. Kivalev riding very well. Heras Armstrong still sitting there, still ticking over those pedals, waiting for the moment to launch the attack which must distance himself from Andrei Kivalev. Kivalev surviving in front of Armstrong by a mere 36 seconds and when we go over the top of this climb we'll get a chance Phil, to see just what damage has been done to the yellow jersey of Francois Simon because he today must be losing huge time. Well look what's the gap here because 800 meters is the lead for Longelda but transfer that into time on a mountain and the gap is still there as Ulrich takes them over from Bolocchi at 2.44. So Ulrich takes second place and he's riding magnificently. One has to say that Belocchi is in a defiant mood as well. He never gives up. Uh, Batero will have gone over in fourth and uh, Kivalev there in fifth while the two USP boys have uh, a sign language chat at the back. Another teammate of Armstrong's coming forward here as well. This is Rubiera. He's up alongside the rider from Uscatel Uscadi. That is Inigo Charo. In there with him as well is Gonzalez de Galdiano. The other two Onse riders are going to cause a bit of consternation for Armstrong if they get back to the front. But I would think we're going to be treated to a huge battle. They have to descend right down there into the valley below, and that will be the town of saint Lary. But up above there, you could see the carvings into the side of the hill. That is Pladaday, and when you look at it, it is scary. Well, the dizzy descents now for Jalabert, the new king of the mountains. There is the Pladaday, the mountain on the other side of the valley, uh, opposite saint marie sur We're going there next. And just below that summit, we sit here and wait for Laurent Jalabert, or whichever of the riders near the front of the peloton makes it here first. Behind them, 158 riders still a part of the Tour de France stream well back down the road. Paul Jalabert, who is having a pretty sketchy descent as he tries to open up what is currently shown as a 1 minute 50 second gap to the pursuing Stefano Garzelli with the Mape team. And then it's nearly a minute back to the group, including the second, third, fourth, fifth, and eighth place riders in GC. Armstrong, Ulrich, Belocchi, Kivalev, Botero, they are all there as they continue the assault. Now they're just ahead of the number 35 Festina rider. There is the yellow jersey, the Mayo Jean. It has been a very difficult day for young Mr. Simon, who has spent several days in the yellow jersey. The youngest of the Simon racing brothers is well back. About seven minutes behind Laurent Jalabert, still hasn't reached the crest of this next-to-last climb before the long run down into the valley and then the assault on the Plaid d'Adey. He's about four minutes, maybe four and a quarter unofficially, behind Lance Armstrong, which, if it held to the finish, would mean that the American has cut his time deficit nearly in half to the yellow jersey. And Lance Armstrong has other things to think about right now. His arch rivals are all around him, but he has one teammate with him. Once again, here's Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. This is the group that we're still going to watch running on, containing the Mayo Jaune. And that we're calculating at the moment, he is still the Mayo Jaune of the Tour de France, with one climb left to go in today's stage here in the Pyrenees. It's a long, steady slog to the top of the Val Laurent, and it's a very, very difficult descent for the riders. But uh, Simon is still there, uh, just. This is the leader on his way down. Still going down very, very quickly, but delicately, because he locked up his back wheel earlier on. 
and he went back into it. Maybe we can have a look at that again as we see here the leaders go down as they start their descent. Lawrence Yalaber, the man in trouble. And so she's back wheel snaking away. That's how it happened down there. Back to the leaders here now as we continue on the way down. Another good move for Armstrong because we're getting information. I haven't seen him yet in the group, but in fact, Rubiera has now joined the Lance Armstrong group. The climbers of Lance Armstrong are pulling themselves back into this race. And when we start the final climb of the day, the Plata day, Armstrong may very well have two teammates up alongside him. And that will be good for his morale. And he will then try and build a huge advantage over the rest. It had seemed over the Alpine stages as if Armstrong was in serious difficulty, but now he's got his men with him. They are rallying around. 2.44 was the time that Armstrong went over the summit of this climb, and the clock will now stop on Ger uh, Francois Simon in the yellow jersey. It's going to be around about six minutes when he stops. Eight minutes and 30, 41 seconds for this man, so he's already lost six minutes of his advantage. Armstrong now just three minutes behind the yellow jersey of Francois Simon, and that, I feel, Phil, will get literally blown away on Plata Day. Yep, just a shade over three minutes now. Armstrong is off the Mayo Jean. A couple of seconds over three minutes, and that is a means that a good climb will give Armstrong the yellow tonight, unless Kivalev can manage the situation and keep an eye on Armstrong because he's 28 seconds. Because he's 28 seconds better than Armstrong at the moment, and he's with him. Macy, less than 15 kilometers to go. A little under nine miles remaining in stage 13 of the 2001 Tour de France. And most of those nine miles will be up. Agonizingly so. The sixth and final climb, the Plat de Day, awaits the Tour de France. Stay with us. One, continuing its descent before it gathers its strength, catches its breath, and begins the long climb up the Plat de Day to complete today's stage 13 of the Tour de France. That Laurent Jalabert, the race leader, is down. We saw him lose the rear wheel, and it appears he's done mechanical damage to his bike. He's going to need another bicycle. Here's Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. This is how it happened, and there's a very nasty fall that he looks okay. But, uh, and a very strange fall too, his front wheel just slid away from him. He's now looking at that arm as he comes onto his spare bike and continues his descent. Well, he was in a very difficult situation at the top of the climb where he locked his back wheel up and slid around the corner at the bottom of the climb here. He's got, it must have been gravel or something on that bend. It looks like gravel, but you see is a very experienced bike rider. He fell, but as soon as he knew he was going to fell, his body went all limp. He's just taken a bit of skin off there, but that's not too much. It's a bit of road rash that nearly every professional bike rider's had in his career, but he's up and riding again. A very sensible decision, too, to take on board a new bike immediately. The car behind him will have had a spare bike specifically for Laurent Jalabert, and the crowds in this town here of saint lary soulon are absolutely magnificent. They're all behind Jaja. He still holds on to around about two minutes lead over the man chasing him on the road, Stefano Garzelli, and 2.45 over the huge Armstrong group. And it would be huge for Jalabert if he could win this stage today because he escaped the main field after just 27 kilometers of racing. He is a man of talent, there's no question about that. He's led now for more than 150 kilometers and the majority of that by himself. He left the group he was with of nine riders uh, just after crossing the climb of the Col de Porte d'Aspe, went away on the descent of that mountain and nobody has viewed him since. And there's been a tremendous battle amongst the top riders behind. One on one, they've gone for each other, but they haven't yet brought back the man at the front. Here is Ulrich here now. What's he doing at the back here? Just cruising at the back, just taking the descent nice and easy. But that was a very quick decision by Laurent Jalabert. It would have taken around about half a minute to get a back wheel in there and immediately shouted at the mechanic to bring him a bike. The bike is held on by a quick release lever. The mechanic flicked that lever, had the bike down to him in around about 15 seconds and Jalabert was up and riding again. But it's going to be very difficult for him now because it's going to be a massive battle on the Plata Day right now. Here comes Bjarne Reese up alongside him. How are you doing, Jaja? He's going to give him information on the race right now. He'll tell him 140 behind is Garzelli, 245 in behind is a huge group containing Armstrong, Heras and Rubiera, all from US Postal, as well as Ulrich, Velocchi, Kivilev and Botero. Well, this is Jalabert now. The adrenaline will run for a little bit as the crowd cheer him on. This massive crowd in a valley road now, the Pyrenees. 
and uh, Jalabert now he's no stranger to falling off of course he fell off a ladder at the start of the year and broke some ribs and he fell off in a race in Spain a couple of years ago where he burst his eardrum and fractured a bone as well but let's hope now he can hang on to victory today because he certainly deserves it he also had that very huge crash on the opening stage of the Tour de France when it started in Lille into mm. Armentier when he went down with Wilfred Nelison. Nelison had a hard time coming back from the sport and in fact never really ever got over that crash. And Jalabert ending up having to have half his teeth replaced at the front of his mouth there. Ten kilometres to go now for Zaza. Oh, there's a problem. This is the spare bike. A problem with the gears right now. Oh, it's okay. He was The problem there was he was changing from the big chain ring to the small one. And I think because this was the spare machine, it probably wasn't all correctly everything's okay now and Jaja just has to get into his rhythm well boy will this uh, day's store st stage ever lie down with the action here with the man in trouble at the front and the big boys fighting it out at the back and even Ulrich has fallen off today well is there anything we haven't yet seen on today's stage as Laurent Jalabert begins the climb of the Pla de Day he has to be wondering if there is something mechanical wrong with his bike and that cannot be good for his confidence as he begins the biggest climb of the day we'll be back go and it looks like a situation of Alduez all over again because Rubiera who has come up as he did at Alduez is going to sell himself now to launch Armstrong into the climb. Well one rider from the uh, Kofidis has gone off the back that's probably Montcoutier there where's number 77 the Frenchman the big hope for France still in that group the other Kofidis rider is Andrei Kivilev he is surviving at the moment but this is the big charge of the US Postal Service on the front here Jose Luis Rubiera Armstrong moving up into second position on Armstrong's wheel is the man who we expect to go forward and win the Tour de France one year Roberto Heras he won last year the Vuelta a España and this is the confirmation of the time gaps on the road so the Onse have lost the two men so they're isolating now Velocchi and also the other rider they are isolating too is Ulrich all of his teammates have left him now well, the stars and stripes there waving for Armstrong there's a few trickle oars of France but now on the front of the main front group it appears that Jan Ulrich is going to go to the front again well, well there's just about four of them left I think because they, the pressure has gone on at the back there's Ulrich, Belocki, Heraz and Armstrong in the group behind as we now watch and there they are and Belocki is the next to go now so it's 2-1 towards US Postal as they take on Ulrich here and what a fight back by Heraz well Rubiera has gone he's done his job and he's being now taken over at the front there by Heraz Heraz is going to ride his heart out for Lance Armstrong he has huge admiration for his leader wants to learn a lot off him in the next few years he said the difference between my seasons this year is absolutely remarkable I've spent a lot of time in previous years riding many races to get prepared for the big tours but with Armstrong we've trained and worked together we've looked at all of these mountains they know these mountains now and Heras is a great bike rider he's been to the Tour de France before and been successful and right now he's trying to drag his leader up to the yellow jersey at the end of today Ulrich is the only man at the moment who can stay on the wheel of Armstrong this is a role reversal of yesterday when Armstrong was put under pressure by Ulrich and he took off and gained a few seconds lead. Ulrich now looking back to see where Belocchi is and Ulrich will be climbing himself up into second place in the standings tonight. He will because he is one second behind Belocchi overall and that's what he's got right there. That's all he needs to go over Belocchi in the overall classification. We are heading up to the 1-2-3 in the order they finished in Paris a year ago right now as Andrei Kivilev will continue to try and keep them under control he must finish within 28 seconds of Armstrong but the way it's looking Armstrong will get a bonus and that will not help his claim this is the leader the man who doesn't know the dr dramatic battle going on behind him he is seven kilometers away from the greatest victory of his life the only thing Jaiser will know about this stage is when he watches it on the video later on this evening he will know what kind of a battle has taken place he will worry about his own crash but when he sees the crash of Jan Ulrich he will realize he escaped quite luckily. Jalabert now is showing that he is a great champion, turned professional back in 1989 as a young rider for the Toshiba team, which was led in those days by the man who Bernard Tappy, who wanted to come into sport in a big way. Tappy signed up men like Greg Lamont and Bernard Eno. At the moment, he's hoping.
hoping to survive and he still Phil has around about a minute 45 over these riders Roberto Heras on the front with a bandage on his knee Lance Armstrong wears number one and Jan Ulrich Bilocki though will not give up right now he's only 10 or 15 seconds off the back that man is a fighter we've seen him fight over these mountains we're still looking for the whereabouts of Garzelli. We think he's still in front, but the cameras are jumping around so much we can't find him at the moment. And now we're seeing as Jalabur continue to hope he can just hang on now. He knows the fight is on behind him to haul him back. They're not really racing for Jalabur, they're infighting. And by infighting, they are closing in on Jalabur. A minute 45 to Jalabur. And behind Jalabo, we think still, is Stefano Garzelli. He's a minute and 25 behind Jalabo. So, Armstrong's group just 20 seconds behind Garzelli and a minute 45 behind Laurent Jalabo doing the ride of his life today. But then so are so many people in today's stage of the Tour de France, not least Ulrich and Armstrong. Less than three and a half miles to go as you look at Joseba Balaki trying to pull himself back into the Tour de France leadership. Right now, you get the sense the fuse is lit on Lance Armstrong. When will it go off? We'll be right back to find out. Rejoined his captain at the front, Armstrong is now giving his final show of strength in favor of Armstrong. Then we will be down to a battle between the top two men of last year's Tour de France. And Lance Armstrong advanced, and Ulrich is going. This is another attempt by Ulrich. You've got to admire the German and the acceleration answered by Armstrong. It's good by Heras now because the second kick comes. And Ulrich saw the approach there to Bolocki and didn't want him to come back. What a huge performance there by Roberto Heras. This man is a star of the future. You know, he's finished fifth in the Vuelta on a couple of occasions. Sixth overall, he's won stages. He worked his heart out for Armstrong right now. But these are the two strongest men in the bike race. Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong. Ulrich will not give up. He will fight all the way to the finish line. He's a tough bike rider, but so too is Lance Armstrong. He now knows he only has to watch one man in this race, and the man is right in front of him at the moment. He wears number 11. There are 1 minute and 13 seconds behind Laurent Jalabert and 7 minutes in front of the yellow jersey of Francois Simon. It is going to be very close for the Frenchman, but I do believe that at the end of today, the man from US Postal will pull onto his shoulders the yellow tunic as leader of this year's Tour de France. He needs three more minutes on this climb to jump over Francois Simon. He needs only, because he's going to get in the time bonuses now, about 15 seconds over Kivalev, and he's got all of that now. Way in the distance, you can see the ski station summit of Pladade, and the battle lower down is continuing. Laurent Jalabert is six kilometers from the top now, but they are coming at him so quickly, and it's going to be a battle between the two great riders of the era. Well, Ulrich was using the motorbike there to try and lift the pace a bit. He's got a huge gear ticking over, and he opened up about a half a bicycle length advantage over Armstrong. Armstrong just accelerated onto the wheel of the German, but this now is the day of survival for Francois Simon. Simon started the day hoping he could hold on to the yellow jersey for one more stage, but that is going to be so difficult. He can hardly keep on the back of this group that he's with right now. He's riding over and above himself. This man in the past has lost hours in the Tour de France, and today he's losing minutes and fighting on. He still lost seven minutes so far to Lance Armstrong. And if he loses more than nine minutes and ten seconds, he will relinquish the lead in this three-week bike race. Laurent Jalabert, as he goes round the corners, looks down the valley to see where they are now. He knows they are coming. He knows they are coming quicker than he can pedal. And my goodness me, when you break away after 27 kilometers and you're still leading with just six kilometers to go, his legs must be terribly, terribly tired. But he is the new king of the mountains, and what a king he is. Conquering every call today except the first one. He finished second over that. The only important last one, I think, is the reservation of these two riders. Now this is psychological. Armstrong now having been attacked a couple of times by Ulrich moves to the front. He's now going to set the tempo. There are so many Americans out on the slopes of this mountain today. It's almost as if he was racing in front of home turf. We've met an awful lot of people from Austin, Texas who've come out here to see Armstrong and they're all convinced of one thing, Phil, that Armstrong is going to be in yellow tonight. Ulrich now must fight to stay with Armstrong. This man has got the most unbelievable cadence in the sport of international cycling these days. Ticking 
knocking over around about 90 to 95 revolutions per minute on the slopes of these climbs a few years ago was almost unheard of. It was a little bird in his ear called Miguel Indurain told him to climb, you have to turn a low gear and Ulrich's under pressure. This is another attack and we've seen this on the mountains around France this last few weeks and now he's gone again and when he goes Paul we wonder because this man just opens a gap and makes Ulrich look like a club cyclist. Unbelievable, he didn't even attack there, he went to the front and set a hard tempo and just lifted the pace again and again. He has now opened up 20 seconds advantage over Ulrich in no time at all. Very shortly just round the corner he will see Laurent Jalabert. Jalabert is 43 seconds in front of Armstrong at the moment. Look at his jersey though, it is absolutely soaked with perspiration today after this long journey through the mountains. The Pyrenees are smiling on Armstrong right now, the skies are clear of clouds. This has been one of the most magnificent days we've seen in the Pyrenees in recent years. But Armstrong still needs to finish 9 minutes and 10 seconds ahead of Francois Simon. He's on a mission, that's what he wants, he wants to be in yellow tonight. Six kilometers from the summit, Lance Armstrong has flown away from the Tour de France. He has just jumped the gap up to the man in the lead, Laurent Jalabert. He will now continue to win a mountain stage of the Tour de France. What he did in the Alps, he's now going to repeat here in the Pyrenees. There's another record he might be interested in now because the most active cyclist on the circuit at the moment has 12 stage wins in the Tour de France. And now this will be number 10 for Lance Armstrong and plenty of opportunity before Paris to win again. Now look at the defiance of Jalabert. He's tried to lift his pace. Jalabert is a star. He's a champion as well. And in fact, Armstrong looked across at him and I would say uttered a word of encouragement because Armstrong will appreciate the move by Laurent Jalabert today. But that appreciation is not going to last very long at all. Jalabert lifted it for about 20 meters and now there's one man alone at the lead of the Tour de France. His name is Armstrong. He wears number one. And this is going to be a monumental stage we expect expected it to be and Armstrong is floating up this mountain the gear is ticking over for him without any pain at all this man is the best and here coming up towards that same five kilometer to go van and now is Jan Ulrich but again he is a beaten man beaten on the slopes of the high mountains when he seems to do everything right the best form has come to the tour I would say his form is better than when he won the Tour de France in 1997 but he's hit a superman as he's already lost 20 seconds now and dancing away to his third stage victory of this year's Tour de France is Lance Armstrong free as a bird to fly now he's crossed all of the calls he's been attacked he's counter-attacked he's had to come back he's even waited for Jan Ulrich when he fell off and now Wano a Mano he just flies away this is quite remarkable right now it's 11 seconds already over Jalabert 20 over Ulrich 45 seconds back to his teammate Roberto Heras who did an absolutely magnificent job of setting this up to Armstrong before the start of the tour we questioned the ability of bringing in Rubiera who hadn't shown any form at all so far this season and now he set the race up for Armstrong Ulrich his head bowed in pain trying to pull himself up to Jalabert it gives you an idea of just how great the performance of Laurent Jalabert has been today because Ulrich who's the strongest man in the bike race is having a hard time pulling himself back up to the Frenchman and Jalabert Phil looks almost relaxed he's waiting he may even lift the pace I don't know if he can even lift the pace anymore Ulrich he's going to come by him with his mouth wide open there's an effort being made by Laurent Jalabert remember his arm is going to be sore from the fall but they've both got sore arms they're just opposite sides of the body right now as they both continue and the revs are still there for Ulrich he still fights on at least second place in Paris he's never finished worse than second in all of his tours de France and now that's the way it's going to be again I think and this is the little encampment of the Americans there wishing Lance all the best they've got the, the flags and balloons and he's raced by now there's the flag following him up the hill as he passes under four kilometers to the finish with every rev of the pedals now he is gaining time but is he going to gain at the nine minutes and ten seconds he requires to be the Mayo Jean tonight the answers are we think is yes but we won't know yet well he has to keep going he has to ride his tempo now because the important thing Phil is to open up as much time over Francois Simon I'm absolutely certain he'll do it but we won't know that until this man gets to the finish line in a few moments time and what of this man Jan Ulrich who started the day 
about three minutes and 40 seconds or so behind Lance Armstrong, and now he will be more than four minutes behind, it appears, at the end of the day. He'll be right back. On today because he's racing for yellow now as he heads up to the top of the Plat de Day. All the best bike riders in the world have won on this climb, and I'm sure Lance Armstrong knows that too. This man will not give up. He's losing a second or two, but he's not losing huge amount of time. And look at the crowd here. If they could pedal the bike for him, I think they would. They would cheer on every one of these bike riders because most of these people at the side of the road today are cyclists. They know what kind of pain these professionals have to go through. They can imagine what it's like to go at the speeds that Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong have ascend ascended here, the Plata Day. The complete laboured style of Jan Ulrich is unbelievable, but he's a strong man. He will fight all the way to the finish. He will get some respite in a moment, Phil, because this climb just descends for around about 750 metres, but then it kicks up for the last 2K. Ulrich, oh, he gets it onto the big ring there. He just wants to try and is lo limit his losses to Armstrong. Well, I'm not so sure he made a mess of that gear change. His legs seized up. They're so tired. He's going to have to pick up his rhythm again now. This man doesn't bother with the gears. He puts it in this low gear, pedals quickly, and just keeps the rhythm going. An absolute and utter concentration. He knows that with every turn of those pedals now, he is racing towards the yellow jersey. The jersey he's made his own these past two years, and I reckon now he's laying the foundations for yet another one in Paris, which is only a week tomorrow now. He continues another day in the Pyrenees tomorrow with a massive finish in Lazard Den. And I think, you know, the way he's riding, he'll look for victory there too. This is absolutely remarkable, the performance of Armstrong. He's come and changed the face of training and preparation in the sport of professional cycling. In the past, riders used to use races like the Giro d'Italia as preparation, but Armstrong goes and trains on all of these courses. He looks at them on a number of occasions, and he will know just exactly where the two-kilometre-to-go banner is because it's right in front of him now. He's trained on this climb with his teammates, and today they came good. They set him up for this perfectly. Rubiera and Heras dug deep into the suitcase of courage to pull themselves to the front of the bike race and set up Armstrong for this huge attack, attack that he's put in now. Yes. Ulrich coming through the same point where Armstrong was a few moments ago, but Armstrong is 40 seconds in front of him. He is such a strong bike rider, but the big problem he has is he carries around about 8 kilos more weight than Lance Armstrong. And when you consider they both have almost exactly the same power, that is the disadvantage that the big German has over the American. Armstrong illness took eight kilos away from his body weight, but he retained all of the power that he had that took him to a world championships back in 1993 and also to sixth place in the Olympic Games in 1996 when his body was riddled with cancer. He's looking forward at the end of this year to his fifth year anniversary as a cancer clear patient. And that will be huge for Armstrong to go five years clear of cancer with three Tour de France wins under his belt. More like the running of the Bulls there, the Basques with the two Spaniards racing at those flags. Uh, but uh, they're the next two riders on the road now, and Haras has really found his form today to help out Armstrong and finish in the top four on top of the mountains. As he continues now, the clock will start when he crosses the line. He's looking for a tad over nine minutes for the yellow jersey. It'll be a long, tense wait, but tomorrow I think he'll be riding his last day in the Pyrenees as the leader of the Tour de France. And if you think about it, there's no other man worthy of the jersey after you've seen this man ride like this. His performances in this tour have been absolutely perfect. He's been on schedule at every one of his rendezvous. The opening day prologue, he was there where he wanted to be, in third place, very close to the front. The team time trial, he was the man who called the shots when the team lost Roberto Heras, and that Roberto Heras has paid him back for this today. Then when he went into the Alps, as always, as has become his habit, he lent, lent the race to himself. He actually went out and hammered everybody home on the Alpe d'Huez and backed it up the next day with two back-to-back -back wins in the Alps. The huge climb up to Chambrus. 1,000 metres to go, and very shortly he'll turn into the finishing straight here, and the crowd will go absolutely ballistic. And 
they're all very orderly and it's a wide road now for Lance Armstrong how must he feel now at the last kilometer of Plata Day as he was at Alp Duez the other mecca of cycling in the Alps he won there he won the time trial he could have almost have won yesterday when he attacked near the end but now he's certainly making amends on this second day in the Pyrenees Armstrong heading now for his 10th stage win in his Tours de France he's too short of the record of the current cyclists held by Mario Cipollini who has 12 and of course we expect Lance to at least win the time trial and he can choose any one of the others he likes I think he may well choose tomorrow as well because this man is unbeatable in the mountains things might change if he gets the yellow jersey because the tactics of the race will take a different turn a thousand meters to go now the Flem Rouge for Jan Ulrich but this man has not given up at all 55 seconds is the gap between these two men on the road we don't have to worry anymore about Andrei Kivilev because he's more than two minutes behind Lance Armstrong this face this picture this style we've seen every time the road has gone up the big mountains of this year's Tour de France and Armstrong coming up now Phil for another magical victory here at the summit of the Pyrenees 55 seconds that was the victory margin for Jacques Anquetil over Raymond Poulidor almost 40 years ago when they had a great battle on the Massif Central Puy de Dom. now we're seeing it between an American and a German on Plata Day and he is pulling away with every pedal rev now Armstrong is going to win the stage when he crosses the line the clock will count and the minute he gets to nine minutes then it will mean he is the leader of the tour he can get even less than that because he gets a 20 second bonus for the victory here at Plata Day as well well Francois Simon currently has just gone past the five kilometer to go signboard so he's a long way down this mountain it will be a long wait for Lance Armstrong to see whether or not he will put on the yellow jersey but still Phil he dances still he wants to extend his lead over everybody else in this bike race he's coming up to the finishing line right now and it is just like a dance and he's leading the tune so Lance Armstrong climbs now to his next victory in the Tour de France and this I think will be the sweetest remember he was 35 minutes behind just a few days ago he is now going to sit down when he wins this stage and see if he's changing the US Postal blue shirt for a yellow one a magnificent and he looks at the sky memories again perhaps of Fabio Casatelli on a day this race crossed the Porte d'Aspe where his teammate died in 1994 Back to Ulrich as he continues to climb. The clock has already started. Lance Armstrong now has 10 victories in the stages of the Tour de France. He's won here at Alp d'Huez, Chamrousse and at Plata Day. Ulrich is absolutely worn out here. He knows the clock has started counting. He is trying to save as much as he can and get as much as he can. He wants to distance himself from Yoshiba Balocchi and make sure at least he will finish second yet again in Paris. This man is so much fitter than when he won his first Tour de France. He's come to this race completely prepared for the Tour de France. He's a slimmer Longeline Lian Ulrich, but he's no actually, he can't fight Armstrong, he can't fight him in the mountains. He may well rival him I'm on the flat time trials, but for Ulrich today, Phil, he's going to concede almost a minute on the line. One minute exactly outside on the course, so it's still Francois Simon. He knows what he has to do. He will now know because the crowd will tell him that Lance Armstrong has crossed the finishing line. He's probably started his watch there to try and hope he can finish inside eight minutes and 50 seconds because that is what Armstrong needs because Armstrong with first place there will get himself a 20 second time bonus at the moment Armstrong has moved into second place in the Tour de France he's gone over Andre Kivalev the clock continues to count now no one else has crossed the line we are now heading up towards the two minutes time gap 59 seconds, they might call it a minute uh, for Ulrich there. This is the next man in for Lockie ahead of Heras. What a ride Heras did for his man. 146 it seems. And uh, we go right down the mountain now. And the speed of the climbing here of the race leader, I think Paul is just not going to do it. He has done his best, this man. He's risen to the occasion, like all true leaders of the tour, pull on yellow and fight. This looks like Serrano coming in now as he crosses the line, 2.51 down. 
Looks no sign yet of Kivalev, Paul. Next match Paul coming will be Zsa. Here he is. The bands as a former world time trial champion on his Listen shoulder. To the Listen. crowd. They love it. They know this man has done a ride today. They know he's been a hero. He will put on the King of the Mountains competition today. The leader in that competition. 3-11 for him. Sixth, seventh place on the stage. A great ride. One of the rides of the day, if not the ride of the day there. As they continue to come up and the clock ticks on, no sign yet of Kivalev or the race leader. They're still on the mountain. There is Andre Kivalev, who has certainly given up second place in the Tour de France. The question now is, will Lance Armstrong be in yellow at the end of the day? Francois Simon is still out there. And all eyes will be on the clock, waiting for the Mayo Jean to appear over the final rise. Kivalev tried to hang in all day long. The rider from Kazakhstan with the Kofidis team has done himself proud. Five minutes and 45 minutes in the saddle. He will finish about four minutes behind stage winner Lance Armstrong. And there is Simone. His fans willing him up the mountain, but he still has a long way to go. We'll be right back. Divisional top five, Lance Armstrong, Jan Ulrich, Josebe Baloki, Roberto Harris, and Stefano Garzelli. The question is, when will the Frenchman finish, and will he be in yellow? Well, the clock continues to tick on, and this man is now just at three minutes and ten seconds away from losing his yellow jersey to Armstrong. As we see Didier Rousseau continue, and they've lost six minutes, followed by Alexander Vinukarov. So they are next in. And Kivalev came in, by the way, and he conceded at just over four minutes to Armstrong. It's touch and go. I need the computer for that one as to whether he'll hang on just ahead of Bolocki and Ulrich in the overall. And here is the yellow jersey now just crawling his way up to two kilometers to go to the summit. And this is going to take him an awful long time. 7.12 on the clock right now as we look at some of the other positions of riders who've come in. Igor Gonzalez de Galliano came in sixth, almost three minutes behind Armstrong. Jalabert held on courageously to seventh place, three minutes, 12 behind. Serrano was eighth. 3 minutes 15 back. Inigo Sharo, the rider from Uskatel, he came in in ninth place. Andre Kivilev came in in 10th, 4.02 behind. That was plenty. But this is another teammate of Armstrong, Jose Luis Rubiera. He has done a great job for Armstrong and the US Postal Service today. They were questioned about the choice of climbers in the team, but today we know why Johan Brunel picked them. They certainly were worth their weight in gold. They most certainly were. They rode superbly because they were certainly suffering a lot. They had to rejoin Armstrong at the front to do that. This man is being left now to do all of the work and just drag himself up the mountain. But he is now just 40 seconds away from losing yellow. Well, he's one and a half kilometers from the finishing line. He's a long way from that last Flam Rouge. The kite will indicate to him that the end of his suffering is nigh. And it's going to take him so much longer on a long stage like this. On the uphill climbs, when you crack, it can take you almost three minutes to do one kilometer. Armstrong was ticking them out at one and a half minutes. Francois Simon has worn the jersey filled with absolute pride. He's worn it through the mountains. He took it on the slopes of Alpe d'Huez, exactly the spot where his brother Pascal lost it in 1983 and he's kept it bravely through the Alpine stages and over the first stage of the Pyrenees too but he's still got to drag it right up there so he can say he led the tour for three days but it'll be his last as Cloden comes in for Telecom nine minutes down Lance Armstrong leads the Tour de France tonight they can't take that away from him now lower down the slopes and there's still a long way to ride is Pascal Simon who is going to lose 15 minutes well it's over nine minutes and ten seconds now which is the advantage he had on Lance Armstrong this morning and it's ticking away all of the time he hasn't even yet got to the one kilometer banner and that's going to take him another three minutes on his wheel there you can see the Kelme right there but Banesto rider Pascual Rodriguez he's not too bothered about working right now because he knows that the man in yellow wants to set the tempo until the last possible meter to try and keep himself high in the standings this man has ridden a marvelous tour he got 34 minutes on one stage and in the mountains he's lost nearly all of that right now well Lance Armstrong led the Tour de France for 13 days when he won in 99 12 days when he won in 2000 
He won't lead for that length of time this time, but he'll still win the Tour de France after this show of form again in the high mountains. And there is one day of high mountains remaining on the Tour de France. And so two jerseys have changed shoulders, the yellow and the king of the mountains. Will the men in white and green be the same at the end of the day? Stay with us. Prince Armstrong, who has averaged just under 21 miles an hour for this fabulous stage. Here are Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. A Frenchman struggles to the top of Platte Day. He has been truly proud to that jersey of the Tour de France for three days through the toughest mountains, but today he couldn't make it. Francois Simon will grit his teeth and ride to the summit, and he might just get there inside 14 minutes behind the arrival of Lance Armstrong, the new leader of the Tour de France. But Armstrong most certainly now the new leader for this man. It's absolute purgatory this last 500 meters. He's pushed his body further than he's probably ever pushed it before in the mountains to keep that yellow on his jersey for as long as possible. Livingston has just come across the line in front of him, who've done an excellent job for Team Telecom today. But on the clock, it's 12.53 and still counting for the yellow jersey. Francois Simon will give up his yellow dream this afternoon, but most certainly, Phil, he will keep himself pretty high in the overall rankings. He will indeed. He'll still be a contender in this year's tour, heading for his finest finish in Paris. There's the clock counting him out of the Maillot Jour now. Lance Armstrong has known for about three or four minutes that he's been the leader of the tour. What a day for him. 13-20 behind Lance Armstrong today. And it's goodbye to the Maillot Jour for Francois Simon. But he's no reason to feel sad about that. He was a, an excellent leader. And the crowd absolutely rising to salute the man from France who's worn that jersey admirably and makes it a, quite an incredible history for the Simon family. Three out of four of the riders who were professionals have won stages. Two of them have worn the yellow jersey and one of them has been yellow jersey and, yeah, and stage winner. But Lance Armstrong, he's the top man today. The crowd are waving American flags here as Armstrong mounts the podium for the third time in this year's Tour de France. He won four stages last year, and who's to bet he won't win a few more yet? He's now won ten stages since he first won a stage in 1993 at Verdun. Funnily enough, that was where Laurent Jalabert won this year, and we'll see him shortly as the new leader of the King of the Mountains. Well, Armstrong going down and everybody there quite ecstatic to see this man finally put on the yellow jersey he's always put the yellow jersey on at the end of the alpine stages or the first stage of mountains as we look here at the classification of the stage armstrong leading ulrich home by a minute but locky by a minute 56 46 with heras and a long way further back andre kivilev at four minutes and two seconds but phil what a great ride by jalabert there in 7 3 12 down my hero of the day no doubt about that he crossed all the calls alone he fell off he remounted and he didn't quite make it to the top that's bike racing for you as we look out across the beautiful pyrenees here here he comes he's back again and this is what he wanted he said he smelt it a couple of days ago now he wants to ride wearing it to the end of the tour de france he said there's nothing nicer than to ride in a yellow jersey in this great event Provisionally, he will lead overall by 3 minutes 54. Andre Kivalev, his show of defiance today, has kept him in second place. And Francois Simon has slipped only to third. Well, gentlemen, a story was going around early in the tour when Lance Armstrong was out of the yellow jersey. His little son, Luke, who will be two in October, looked up at the podium and said, Daddy, that man is wearing your shirt. I don't know if Lance Armstrong promised to get the yellow jersey back for son Luke, but he is back in it right now. Laurent Jalabert assumes the King of the Mountains jersey with an absolutely astonishing ride today. Every Frenchman can be proud of this man. As Paul and Phil mentioned earlier, he was very much the athlete of the day, aside from Lance Armstrong. He fell off, he won every hill, he has seized the King of the Mountains jersey, and rightfully so. And speaking of mountains, it's time for our Subway trivia question of the day. It deals with high mountains. Can you tell us what is the highest mountain that the Tour de France Peloton will visit this year? The highest mountain on the 2001 Tour de France? If you've been on OLNTV.com, you probably know the answer. We'll have it for you when we return in just a moment. Our Subway trivia question, what is the highest mountain 
on the 2001 Tour de France. It is the Col de Tourmalet coming up tomorrow on stage 14, which will take the riders to a height of 2,115 meters. That's about 6,800 feet. And they will be breathing especially hard. Well, thanks, Bob. Well, what a demonstration it's been today. But what a race full of, you know, things you could not predict. The shooting off the road of Jan Ulrich, the crash of Laurent Jalabert, the waiting by Lance Armstrong for This stage had everything. And this man, Bolocki, the counter-attacks he made, even when he was dropped, he came back and he attacked. He never gave up. It's been a huge day. We get the sight of another American coming up to the line here. Bobby Jewell had hoped to rival Armstrong in the mountains. But he's going to lose more than 20 minutes on this stage today. A tough day today when everybody knew the old barrel standings would be turned upside down because these mountains are absolutely treacherous and they nearly were treacherous today for Jan Ulrich but Ulrich what a great champion even though he feels that Lance Armstrong is totally superior he will still fight all of the time but Armstrong absolutely loved this win he wanted to do it he opened up as much time as he could today and I think he will be a lot more relaxed tomorrow going into the final Pyrenean stages he wanted the yellow jersey before the exit from the mountain and he certainly did that today in huge style. Well, the Lazard Den climb will be packed with people. I remember in the 80s, uh, the 711 team from America riding the Tour de France, and they had a winner up there, and it was the Norwegian Dag Otto Larsson. I said then, every Dag has his day. I wonder who it will be tomorrow. We'll take a short break. Come back and join us. Age in the mountains, Lance Armstrong has proven that he has climbing skills that no other rider and the peloton for the 88th Tour de France can match. He is simply the best conditioned athlete out here. He is more tactically aware than anyone else. He is the captain of his team. He is rapidly becoming the patron of the peloton. And today he has his third stage victory of this year's tour. And as you might have guessed, Lance Armstrong's performance today is the perfect lead-in to our Mercury Mountaineer ride of the day. And once again, we have a lot of honorable mentions. Laurent Jalabert among them, certainly. But today was all about Lance Armstrong. Not only was he a great athlete, he was a great sportsman, waiting after his arch-rival Jan Ulrich had gone off the road. And then, when it was head-to-head, -head, simply powering away from his rival, catching the Frenchman of the hour, Laurent Jalabert, and then making his way through a sea of admirers to pick up his third stage victory. And he has eaten away all of that time deficit that was once more than 35 minutes from the yellow jersey to slip it over his shoulders. Lance Armstrong, our Mercury Mountaineer ride of the day. And so an amazing day for Lance Armstrong results in his third stage win in four stages on this year's tour. And as we expected, he's back in the yellow jersey here in the mountains. Here are the stage results. Armstrong over Ulrich by one minute flat, followed by Joseba Baloki and Roberto Harris from the U.S. Postal Service team on the same time, 146 behind. And then Stefano Garzelli, who continues his good riding in the middle stages of this year's tour, two minutes, 29 seconds back. Igor Gonzalez de Galeano finishes sixth, 252 out, followed by Laurent Jalabert, who is now the new bearer of the King of the Mountains jersey. And Andrei Kivalev holds on to 10th place, four minutes and two seconds behind. In the GC, Armstrong now leads Kivalev by 3 minutes 54 seconds, while Francois Simon is now 4 minutes 31 seconds out. Jan Ulrich, 5 minutes 13 seconds behind, reassuming 4th place from Joseba Baloki, who is 6 minutes and 2 seconds back. Gonzalez de Galeano is now 6th. Oscar Sevilla in the white jersey of best young rider is 7th. Santiago Botero, 8th, followed by Marco Serrano and Garzelli. Among other notable riders, Laurent Jalabert, 13th, now 21 minutes, 7 seconds back. American Bobby Julik suffered on the climbs today, 53 minutes, 39 seconds back for the Credit Agricole team. Kevin Livingston, who did so much great riding for his team leader on the telecom squad, is now 57 minutes, 45 seconds back, while Jonathan Vauders is 1 hour, 34 minutes and change, and Freddie Rodriguez, the U.S. pro champion, abandoned the Tour de France on today's stage. Now let's join Bob Roll with today's stage winner and the new man in the yellow jersey, Lance Armstrong.
Lance, it's been a while for this yellow jersey to come to you. Does that make it all the sweeter? Oh, it does. I was uh, I, I, I was feeling good, and I thought we had a, a chance to take it back at some point. But I'll tell you, Simone hung in there today. It was not easy. I mean, we get to the the bottom of the last climb, and Johan comes on the radio and says, "Look, you got to go. You got to go pretty hard because he's still he's only seven minutes behind." So fortunately, I had uh, I had Chechu and Roberto there, and and uh, they were able to make a good the tempo and, and we got the time back. Um, it was a very hard stage, but you had a fantastic adversary in Jan Ulrich. He crashed his brains out onto the set, but he got back up, got back into the front, and uh, made some very strong attacks in the finale. Oh, he's he's a tough guy. I mean, that, that, I saw the crash and I thought, oh my God, that guy might never ever get up because it was it was really dramatic. Uh, it looked like when he came back that he was just dirty, so maybe it was a soft landing. But when he went over the bars, I mean, it was it was bad. So. I preferred uh, at that point to wait. I mean, there's no, I don't believe in, in attacking or continuing to race when somebody like that has had a big crash. So it's better to, to wait, let them get back, make sure everything's okay, and then uh, start the race again. Take us through the finish when you attacked to the end. You were really, really making a big effort today. Uh, it's a hard climb. Uh, the, the first half of it's really hard. So I, I, uh, I've been here in training, been here and, and, and studied the thing, and, and I, knew, I knew a lot about it did it a few times in training actually so um, I didn't really want to attack I wanted to just go to the front and try to make as hard a tempo as I could and see if see if I could get him off the wheel tomorrow is another huge stage up to lose hardy then what's the strategy for tomorrow now that you have the yellow jersey um, we don't you know we need to be smart as a team I mean the team is 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 I mean look at the team I mean the team is for for a team that everybody says is nothing or is not strong or is finished or is, uh, wasn't what they used to be. I think they showed them today. You, as much as any cyclist in the world today, honor the sport of this great bike racing society that we have, and it must be very satisfying to pull on the yellow jersey. Oh, it's it's sweet, and, and I, uh, today was the first time I ever passed uh, the Cazzartelli Monument in a race, and it was special. I mean, I wanted when we passed, I said, okay, there's only going to be one winner today, because it was just, when we passed, because we did this entire stage in training, and we passed in training, we stopped, and, and, and I was with uh, Tyler and Peña and Chechu and Roberto, and they, they didn't really know Fabio. They hadn't spent any time with him. They'd never been to the monument. Uh, and it was just a special five or ten minutes that we spent there. And I mean, I was I was crying like a baby then, and and, and I was touched today. So I wanted to win and win for him. All right. Fantastic effort, Lance. Thanks. Now here's an update on the U.S. Coastal Service squad. Armstrong back in yellow. Roberto Harris now 14th, 21 minutes, 16 seconds behind. Jose Luis Rubiera, who also contributed to Armstrong's stage win, one hour, eight minutes, 52 seconds out in 45th. George Hincapi is 65th, one hour, 27 minutes, 31 seconds back, followed by Victor Hugo Pena in 76th, Vacheslav Ekimov 90th, Stefan Yargard 97th, and Tyler Hamilton 105th.